you know, I wanted to call this video why the X-Men movies are bad or something along those lines, but then I decided, no, that's a 100% clickbait title, and I don't like clickbait, so that's not what it calls. So yeah, welcome everyone to this really long video. As you might have guessed, today we're talking about the X-Men. The X-Men are actually my favorite superheroes, and if I do make any more videos, I can guarantee you that they will probably exclusively be about the X-Men. My first exposure to the team of Merry Mutants was in fact through the films, which have been coming out since 2000, if you can believe it. They're older than I am. I'm not exactly sure how it was that I fell so in love with the Children of the Atom, because even though I like their movies well enough, I definitely prefer the MCU films. I think it was really the 90s cartoon that did it, because I started watching it for some reason, but it doesn't really matter. Like I said, I like the X-Men movies pretty well. I genuinely enjoyed almost all of them on my first viewing, and I still really like most of them, my personal favorite being Days of Future Past. However, we're here to talk about the big significant problem that I have with these films. Why am I talking about the problems when I said I like the movies? Well, you see, I got into comic books. Now, first and foremost, my intention is not to be like those people who are like, eee, it's not like the comics, so it's terrible, bleh, or whatever. No. I still respect these movies for what they are, and what they did for comic book movies as a whole, and I don't believe that when you adapt something, you have to be slavishly loyal to the source material. However, I do believe that the source material is still very important, and that no matter what you change, you should always stay true to the essence of the original work. Because, I mean, if you're gonna change everything, then what's even the point of adapting it? So, as I said before, I started reading X-Men comics, and it was there that sealed the deal with the X-Men becoming my ultimate favorites. I've read almost the entire original run of Uncanny X-Men from the beginning in the early 60s all the way up to the late 90s, and more recently I began to dip my toes into the more modern stuff from the 2000s and onward. I haven't read absolutely everything, and I'm not an expert by any means, but I think I have a pretty good idea who and what the classic X-Men were. And I found that the more I read the comics, the less I liked the movies. I cannot stress this enough, I do not hate the X-Men movies. Seriously, I don't. I'm not here to rag on the people involved with making the movies or to personally insult you if you like them. I don't hate these films, I just like them less than I used to. Like, a lot less. But I do still enjoy them when I watch them. Well, most of them, anyway. So let's just get it out there. As I mentioned before, I really only have one problem with these movies. Yeah, there's all the timeline nonsense that some of them fall short of the mark in terms of general film quality, but that's not what I'm here to talk about today. No, my main problem with these movies is the way the characters are portrayed. The characters are the heart and soul of the X-Men, which isn't that surprising. The comic was originally about five misfit teenagers struggling to cope with these bizarre powers they had, and even as time went on and this cast of characters grew and changed, they always stayed true to the same concept. Mutants are humans, just like us. They all have issues they have to deal with. They're all just people trying to find happiness, just like us. So even if you're a little scared, you should give them a chance. And that message was super easy to accept and understand because there were so many awesome characters. Sure, everybody has their own personal likes and dislikes, and some things do vary by the writer, but I think most people will agree that all of the X-Men who have withstood the test of time are great. And of course, there is one character above all the others who transcended the position of mere X-Man and became arguably Marvel's second most popular character of all time. We all know who it is. The best there is at what he does, Wolverine. And therein lies the problem with the X-Men movies. Ever since the very first film, he has been the main focus of the franchise. Granted, they have kind of moved away from him in the more recent movies, but it is a glaring issue in the first trilogy. And even then, they haven't really expanded their focus so much as they just switched it to Professor X, Magneto, and Mystique for some reason. So that's the point. The movies focus too much on Wolverine. Now don't get me wrong, I love Wolverine. The more comics I read about him, the more I liked him. The dude's the most popular X-Men for a reason, but he's not the only one. I mentioned before about how many awesome characters there are in the X-Men world, and it is without a doubt my favorite part of the whole mythos. I had an absolute blast reading all these comics and getting to know all these people, feeling like I had become friends with them. I can only imagine how disappointed I would have been if I had read the comics first and then watched the movies. And I'm still disappointed, so. Now maybe I wouldn't have such an issue with these films if all they did was make Wolverine the main focus. I mean, I kinda get it. When you have such a large cast, it's hard to focus on everyone and give them the attention they deserve. If they decided to simply latch onto him and make him the main protagonist, then fine. Still doesn't really go with the whole team thing and all that, but whatever. The problem is that isn't what they did. No, they flat out damaged the personalities of the other X-Men and adapted them horribly. 
Pretty much all of the characters in the X-Men movies range from almost unrecognizably changed to almost the same but not quite to actually pretty accurate. Unfortunately, the largest majority fall into the almost unrecognizably changed category. The main exceptions, in my opinion, are Magneto and Wolverine, so I won't really be talking about them anymore. I'm going to go through all of the more high-profile X-Men characters featured in the movies and explain why I think they were misrepresented in this adaptation. Oh, and as a quick side note before we get started, I won't be talking about the Deadpool movies or the Wolverine solo films. I'm only going to be talking about the mainstream team movies, from the OG X-Men to Dark Phoenix. Alright then, we all clear? Let's get started. To kick things off, let's talk about Professor X, who's probably the closest thing to a main character after Wolverine. I would generally consider him to be pretty accurate, but in reality he's a lot more kind and gentle and trustworthy than Comics Charles is, who is like, shady as all get out. He's also a bit more stern and aloof, I think, while movie Charles really embraces the fatherly elements of his character. Truthfully, the changes made to his character are ones that I'm pretty much okay with because they stay true to the heart of his character, which is that he's the leader of the team with an undying faith in the ultimate goodness of humanity, even if he occasionally struggles with his own arrogance. They took all the good parts of his character and cut out the shady, creepy ones, and I think that's a good thing. We're starting off on a pretty positive note here, but don't get comfortable because it is all going downhill from here, my friends. So the first character I believe to be really poorly adapted is Cyclops. He's probably the biggest messed up of all in this regard. In the comics, he's been around since the beginning, literally the original X-Men. I know that technically Jean was with the professor's first student, but I don't care, Scott was still the official first X-Men. He's always been a very prominent character in the comics, even if his character has taken some, shall we say, controversial turns in more recent years. However, the basic core of his personality is a grim, serious leader with a lot of pain and rage inside of him. He constantly struggles with the burden of his uncontrollable power, and he's been through some significant emotional trauma, from losing his parents and his brother and being raised in an abusive orphanage, to becoming a mutant and being an outcast, to seeing the woman he loves die multiple times, to being forced to send his son into the future to save his life. This guy's had some tough breaks but he overcomes that and does his best to be the best leader he can be, even if his personal relationships occasionally suffer as a result. In the movies, however, we don't really get any of that. Movie Scott's role is greatly reduced in favor of, you guessed it, Wolverine. We still kind of see that serious part of his personality and maybe a tiny bit of leadership, but overall he really has nothing to do. Mainly he's just there to serve as a rival for Wolverine, and we don't get to see any of his eternal conflict. It's kind of touched on in Apocalypse, but they severely reduce the tragic aspects of his backstory because apparently his parents are alive and well, there was no plane crash, he has no brain damage, and he's just a salty teenager for no discernible reason. And I'm not saying that his backstory has to be identical to the comics, but they removed a lot of the essential aspects of his personal conflict. We also see little to no development in his relationship with Jean in either the original or prequel trilogies, or even in freaking Dark Phoenix, the movie that is supposed to be focused on their relationship. Like seriously, you want to tell me that these two fools have known each other for 10 years and they aren't even dating? Don't even get me started on this stupid time skip to begin with it, it just... <coughs> Sorry. Really the thing that ticks me off about Scott's situation the most is that he's such an interesting, complicated character and they reduced him to a nothing. You had so much potential and you did nothing with it. I'm fine with him having a rival with Wolverine, that's been the relationship from the beginning, but the problem is that they never explore Scott's side of things. They also present it as being just about Jean, when in reality it has a lot to do with their conflicting personalities, but rather than exploring that and seeing how they grow to mutually respect each other, we're just supposed to be like, haha, Cyclops is so lame, Wolverine is so cool, and then he's dead, and his character isn't important anymore. Like I said, they kind of tried to focus on him more in the newer films, and Wolverine is a present, so that isn't the issue, but he just doesn't get enough time for us to really grow to care about him or his relationship with Jean. It's really frustrating, honestly. You had a character with so much depth and development handed to you, and you didn't do a single thing with it. But, speaking of Jean Grey, she's next up. She wasn't quite as bad off as Scott, but she's still not quite there. In the original trilogy, she doesn't really demonstrate any qualities that contradict her character, but she's still kind of flat, almost. Her past isn't explored really, and they don't do much to show us her internal thoughts or feelings outside of her being nervous about her powers. We also don't really get a reason behind why she's so into Scott, since, like I said before, the relationship isn't given any development. The most popular and well-known aspect of Jean's character is her link with the almighty Phoenix Force, which is something that the movies actually explore twice, 
first in X-Men The Last Stand, and then in the aptly titled Dark Phoenix. I'm focusing on original trilogy Jean right now though, so let's talk about The Last Stand. As I'm pretty sure we all know, that movie was a very, very poor adaptation of the Phoenix Saga. See, the whole crux of that storyline is Dean struggling between this godlike power and who she is as a human being. In the end, it's her remembering her love for her friends, and especially for Scott, that causes her to sacrifice herself so that she wouldn't hurt anyone else. The Last Stand doesn't do that. Instead, she straight up murders Scott in the first 20 minutes of the movie, and then it's Wolverine's love, of course, that brings her back from the brink. But not actually, because he still kills her, which is pretty ironic considering that was the one thing he couldn't bring himself to do in the original story, but whatever. My point with Jean is that she's really not much of a character at all. I mean, can you describe any of her traits? She's nice, I guess. She seems to be a kind and carry person, but there isn't much else. She just kind of exists, and then she gets possessed by the phoenix, and then she pretty much just walks around and stares the whole time. We don't get to see her temper or her motherliness towards the other X-Men or any of the interesting things that make Jean who she is. The issue is similar in Apocalypse and Dark Phoenix because even though we're supposed to care about Jean in these movies, we don't really have a reason to. Sure, you can feel bad for her because her backstory is sad, but other than that, there isn't really anything else. As I said before, her relationship with Scott is given basically no development at all, and sure, they're cute together, but we don't get to see how they bonded and grew so close because that stupid time skip gimmick that they kept using for some reason. Yeah, Jean dies at the end of the story and we have basically no reason to care. And the conflict has changed as well, and the film is presented as though Jean is struggling between either embracing or rejecting her emotions, which is kind of how it is in the comic, but we don't really get any of those down-to-earth moments between her and the other characters that draws us into the conflict and helps us understand how they all feel about this and how much they love Jean. Because in the comics, Jean was actually developed and we actually cared. In the comics, Jean is a very empathetic individual, which is something that she and Professor Xavier connect over. However, within the films, we don't really see any of that kindness or empathy, and as a result, we don't have much of a reason to empathize with her. Overall, Jean's character is misrepresented because nothing is represented at all. So next, we have Aurora Monroe, also known by the oh-so-creative name of Storm. Similar to the last two, she is criminally underused within the X-Men films. She's more like Jean in that very little of her personality is displayed, but I also feel like in this area, her character is somewhat contradictory to her traditional appearances. See, Comic Storm is very compassionate and kind, but she is 100% a leader, and she has a presence. Like, if she's in the room, you know it, and she's probably taking charge because that's who she is. She's a goddess, she's a queen, and I feel like the movies fail to include that regal, majestic aspect of her personality. Now, I'm not saying she has to be super stiff and uptight all the time, it's not like she doesn't have down-to-earth moments and she's still very human, but I think there was always just a way about her that inspired awe and respect, you know? Movie Storm just doesn't have that. She doesn't even fully have the compassionate aspects of her character. The films make it seem like she has a lot of anger against humanity, not that we're given a reason for it or anything, rather than being more understanding, like she usually is. She barely even has the leadership thing, like she did some leading in The Last Stand, I guess, but it's just not enough. There were a lot of interesting opportunities with her, like maybe show how she struggles with a feeling of superiority over humans since in her background she was actually worshipped as a goddess, or maybe lean into that compassionate part of her character and have her struggling to hang on to that in the face of humanity's cruelty. I don't know, just do something! But like seriously though, what is the deal with all of the X-Men adaptations shaped in Storm like this? There hasn't been a single one to really give her any kind of importance except for maybe the 90s series. I just don't understand. She's an awesome character, and she's also a black woman. You get instant woke points just for featuring her. Maybe that's why she hasn't been strongly featured so far. <laughs> Dang, that would suck. Anyway, the point is that Storm is always underused, and I don't like it. Rogue is another character featured prominently in the original trilogy, and she's different in... a lot of ways. Here's where we really start to get into the contradictory area. So, Comics Rogue is very confident and outgoing, vivacious and lively, with always a snappy comeback at hand. However, she is very mentally unstable, thanks to all those other consciousnesses bouncing around in her head, and she's been manipulated and mistreated by a lot of people, so she has some trust issues. Movie Rogue, on the other hand, is... not that. In the films, Rogue is presented more as this younger girl who's very shy and insecure, and also totally useless. In all the situations she's in, she rarely does anything helpful and is more often the one being rescued. I can think of, like, three instances in all the movies where she was helpful, but that's it. 
Contrast this to the source material where 90% of the time Rogue is literally the MVP. Like, okay, I get it if you don't give her flight and super strength because Fox didn't have the rights to Miss Marvel, but that doesn't mean she can't still be a supported member of the team. I mean, have you seen X-Men Evolution? Go watch it. Seriously. Do it. Watch the show. It's like a legitimately really good adaptation of the X-Men. One of the instances where Rogue's uselessness is most glaringly obvious is in the beginning of The Last Stand. We all know that movie is kind of a hot mess, but I'm talking specifically about the beginning where the X-Men are training in the Danger Room. There's Wolverine, Storm, Colossus, Kitty, Iceman, and of course, Rogue. The simulation appears to be against some sentinels, and we see all the other team members using their powers in some way. Bobby freezes a missile to stop it in midair, Kitty uses her phasing powers to let a missile pass through her and Bobby, Aurora uses her wind powers in various ways, and Peter uses his strength to throw Logan at the sentinel so he can behead the thing. But Rogue has literally nothing at her disposal. The only thing she does is take Colossus' power so that she can turn to steel to protect herself, but that's it. She doesn't even keep using it. The rest of the time, she's literally just running around. So like, what was the point of the training session? What do they do, just toss him in the danger room and be like, oh, Welp, good luck using those life-stealing powers on a sentinel, sucker. You're not gonna give her weapons training or, you know, basic hand-to-hand -hand combat? What are you even doing? I'm sorry, I just really like Rogue and I'm very passionate about this. What was my point? Oh, yeah. Basically, Rogue's character in the movies is incredibly subdued. The fun, appealing parts of her personality are gone, and they even remove part of her tragic powers which are essential to her character's conflict. Her relationship with Wolverine is sweet and all, but that's about all she has going for her. In the end, they took one of the most likable, interesting characters in the comics and turned her into a complete nothing. Are you sensing a pattern here? Next up, we have Iceman, who is definitely contrary to his comic book counterpart, and pretty drastically too. Comics Iceman is a cocky jokester, and while he's not flat out mean, he's not exactly sensitive either. Movie Iceman, on the other hand, is sweet and gentle, quieter and not as prone to make jokes, and much more humble. His entire character was pretty much overhauled, and while he's very likable for the relatively brief time that we see him, he's not really Iceman. If they wanted to have a character like that, then why not use someone who had that personality to begin with, like Colossus, or even, I don't know, Longshot. Speaking of whom, Colossus, not Longshot. He is barely in the movies at all, which is really a terrible crime. I can't even comment on his character because li he has literally no personality to speak of. Why would you leave out the precious little cinnamon roll? My beautiful metal son deserves more. Yeah, Colossus is one of my favorite X-Men, in case you couldn't tell. Another of my favorites is Nightcrawler, who we see in X2, Apocalypse, and Dark Phoenix. His character is pretty consistent across all three films, surprisingly enough, and he is pretty likable. He still differs from Comic Kurt though, because Comic Kurt is much more animated. He's a jokester and he's always fooling around, although he has a huge heart. He's friendly, he's dashing, and he's typically always very joyful. Movie Nightcrawler does retain that sweet, kind-hearted aspect of his character, and they do strongly highlight his Catholic faith, which is something I greatly appreciate being a Catholic myself. It is a little weird though, because he has these like self-inflicted scar things, which he says are one for every sin, but like, <laughs> that's not what Catholics do? And Nightcrawler never had markings like that in the comics either, but I guess they did it because they didn't make him furry, <laughs> which in and of itself is another issue, but I digress. Even though Kurt in the movies is pretty similar to the comics, he's much more meek and quiet. He doesn't have that same spark and liveliness that Nightcrawler should have, and I feel like that was a poor decision. There's also Kitty Pride, who, if I'm being honest, isn't that bad. She pretty much feels like Kitty to me, although her appearances are very brief. Maybe she's not as outspoken as comics Kitty is, but that's the only thing I can think of. She doesn't have a relationship with Wolverine or Storm, which I am not pleased about, but she's barely in the films at all, so what can you do, I guess? Overall, not that bad. Good job, movies, you actually did something semi-right, someone other than Wolverine or Xavier and Magneto. I applaud you. We also see Hank McCoy, also known as the Bounding Beast, who is actually my most favorite X-Man of all time. And the beast that we see in The Last Stand is actually really good, and undoubtedly the best part of the whole movie. He's criminally underused, similar to Storm, but he feels like the Hank I know and love from the comics. Getting into the newer trilogy, however, he undergoes a pretty drastic change. He becomes more of this shy, awkward nerd, and while he's still sweet and likable, he doesn't have that charisma and just outright forthcoming personality that makes Beast so lovable. They didn't even show him growing into that greater confidence despite the fact that they had four whole movies to do so. He isn't a bad character and he does actually have a personality, unlike some characters I could mention, but he isn't the Hank I know. 
And that's a real shame because Hank was really unique because of his personality. He's huge and hairy and beastly, but rather than being some harsh brute, he's intelligent and poetic and a gentleman, and he oozes confidence in spite of his appearance. He's such a fun character, and they once again wasted the opportunity to explore that. There's also Quicksilver, who's risen to great popularity thanks to his appearances in these movies, despite never being an X-Man, ever. Who's a member of X-Factor, sure, but not the X-Men. Whatever, that's a nitpick. He is Magneto's son, so I get it. He's pretty similar to his comic book character in that he's cocky, impatient, and loves to steal things, but he's actually a lot nicer than comics Pietro. They also greatly Americanized him and took away his whole relationship with his twin sister, which I think is kind of important, you know? His character is still very, very likable, and he does actually have a personality and a motivation and a conflict, which is more than a lot of these characters can say, so this is an instance where the adaptation did a good thing. It wasn't exactly the same, but they still took the character and actually did something with him. Until Dark Phoenix, that is, but that's a discussion for another time. We also have Alex Summers, aka Havoc. Havoc's main change is that he's a bit more abrasive than I remember him being. I mean, he's not exactly all friendship and hugs in the comics, but I feel like he wasn't quite that... I don't really want to use the word rude, but that's about the closest I could get. Really what they did is turn him into a jock, and comics Alex is not a jock. His character is mainly defined by his relationship with his brother Cyclops, which is drastically changed because they made him the older brother rather than Scott, so his whole little brother complex is completely gone. They don't use him very much, so it's not that big of a deal, I guess, but no oh well. You might be wondering why I haven't gone over Mystique yet, but she is super different, so I'll get to her in a minute. There are a few very minor characters that don't really get any kind of development at all, but I'm just gonna go over them quickly here. We have Angel slash Archangel, Banshee, and Psylocke, who I think are the most prominent comic book characters who also get trash adaptations. I would talk about Gambit, but he's only ever appeared in a Wolverine movie, so he is exempt from this discussion. Let's just print an Origins. Never happened, eh? Good. Yeah, Angel is only in two movies, The Last Stand and Apocalypse, and in both of them his character is pretty much Angel in name and appearance only. Comics Angel is this rich kid who thinks pretty highly of himself, but he's still a cool guy with a good heart. He's very brave to the point of being reckless, and even though he sometimes puts up the facade of spoiled rich kid, he isn't actually that shallow. He also has a very intriguing conflict once he becomes Archangel, where he struggles with this new monstrous nature that he now has, and who the man who he was and wants to be. In the films, however, we don't see anything like that at all. In The Last Stand, he seems more like the shy, insecure teenager who just doesn't even know where he's going with his life, but he's only in like three scenes, so who even knows, am I right? In Apocalypse, he is a cage fighter for some unfathomable reason, and we don't get to know him or care about him at all before he gets turned into Archangel. And for the rest of the movie, he's just a lackey for Apocalypse until he dies at the end. Well, okay then. Rip Warren. At least they won't be abusing his character anymore, right? Moving on, everyone's favorite Irish boyo, Sean Cassidy, only appears in first class before being killed off screen. That was an egregious waste of his character to begin with, but his personality doesn't even feel the same for the short time we have him. For one thing, they made him younger, while Banshee's always been an older, more mature character. I don't really have a problem with that in and of itself, though. There isn't anything wrong with de-aging characters, but I feel like when you do it, you should sow the roots of the character that they're going to become. And first class Banshee isn't really a bad character, he just kind of exists. He uses his powers some and mostly stands around the rest of the time. He kind of just feels like a typical teenager and not much else. Sean is a very nurturing character in the comics, he usually looks out for everyone else, so if they had given him a role as like the big brother of the team, that would have been pretty cool. It would have been a lot better than nothing. I know that Banshee is generally considered to be a B-list or even C-list X-Man, but he's one of my personal favorites and he's been around for a long time, and I think he deserves more than he got. Finally, we have Psylocke, who only appeared in X-Men Apocalypse. Yes, I know that she was technically in The Last Stand, but that character doesn't even remotely resemble Psylocke. She has like, what, one line? I just don't even count that. In Apocalypse, she's very comic accurate as far as appearance goes. Probably not quite Asian enough, but oh well. But definitely not a personality. Comics Betsy has a very refined air to her. She's regal, kind of like Storm. She's got a lot of class, but that doesn't mean she isn't still tough. I mean, this woman fought off Sabretooth with her ribs broken, and that was before she was a ninja. Overall, I think she has a very strong sense of morality. I know that in some of the more recent comics, she becomes more dark and ruthless, but I haven't read those, and even so, I don't think she's ever gone villainous. Villainous, like how she is in this movie. Now, I understand that being a horseman of Apocalypse does not automatically make you evil, since Apocalypse usually manipulates good people or just straight up takes them against their will. 
In this film, however, Betsy is just like this random ninja lady who just goes along with Apocalypse and doesn't appear to have any issue with his agenda at all. And at the end, she just leaves. No sign of remorse, no hint she might join the X-Men someday, nothing. Similar to Angel, she basically has no personality to speak of. She's just a bodyguard for Caliban, of all people, and then she does some cool stunts with Apocalypse, and then she's just gone. Great. Our final main character is probably the one they change the most, and that is Raven Darkholm, the shapeshifter better known as Mystique. In the comics, Mystique has pretty much always been a villain. She wasn't irredeemable or pure evil, but still a villain. She was kind of like a toned-down Magneto, running her own Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and wanting mutant supremacy over humans. Even though she had her moments, she wasn't above killing people, and honestly, she's kind of a sociopath. In the movies, we get all that in the first trilogy, where she is most definitely villainous and feels pretty much the same as Mystique. I don't understand why they made her naked, of all things, but setting that aspect aside and looking just at her behavior, she's pretty okay. The only other thing would be that she's not really anything more than just Magneto's right-hand woman, while in the comics she was almost always a leader who did her own thing. Actually, up until the films, Magneto and Mystique had never worked together on anything. But whatever, it's not that big of a deal. They've both been prominent members of the Brotherhood, so I get the consolidation. In the newer movies, however, her character changed drastically. She's made to be Charles' adopted sister for some reason unknown to man, despite the fact that they gave no indication of that in the previous movies. And by the time we reach Dark Phoenix, she's a complete good guy and she's leading the X-Men. Like, what? Mystique? Miss Tiki Torch is leading the X-Men? I don't know, man, you're just doing something wrong there. I know that Mystique's been a member of the X-Men before, but the way I heard it was that she only did it to further her own agenda, so making her the heroine of her your movie trilogy? That's just weird. It's made worse by the fact that Mystique's character isn't even that interesting within the films. Like, they tried to give her some kind of arc with her hating being a mutant and then becoming proud of it, but she's a shapeshifter. That's not a bad power. That's a cool power. It's not even uncontrollable. She can literally look like anyone she wants and she's upset about that. It's just poorly done. Now, the direction her character was going in Days of Future Past was pretty okay. In that movie, she was a villain, but a sympathetic one. You get where she's coming from. She wants to get revenge on the man who brutally murdered her friends. And if they had kept with that, that could have been kind of interesting. Like, she could recur as a sometimes ally, sometimes antagonist to the X-Men, sort of like Magneto. And imagine if they had reintroduced Rogue and given her and Mystique the same relationship that they had in the comics. Then there could be a really interesting conflict with Rogue deciding to join the X-Men, and maybe Mystique would be all like, you never let me have anything for myself, Charles, or something like that, I don't know. It could have been a whole heck of a lot more interesting than it actually was, I tell you that. Now, originally I was going to talk about villains as well, but then I d decided that they ultimately weren't that relevant to my main point. I might make another video discussing their adaptations and what I liked and didn't like and such, but for this video I decided to keep it focused on just the X-Men themselves. So, yeah, that's it. That's my list of all the characters who I believe to have been poorly adapted in the films that make up the X-Men franchise. And since the characters are the best part of the X-Men, I believe that leads the X-Men movies to be a very poor adaptation of the source material. And that's my point. If you take away the comics entirely and pretend that the X-Men movies are an original creation and the movies range from bad to average to actually pretty good, depending on your opinion, of course, as movies by themselves, they're not that bad. Yes, the timeline does get ridiculous in the later films, but it doesn't affect the overall quality of the movies themselves. However, the X-Men franchise is not an original creation. It's an adaptation of a comic book mythos that has existed for over 50 years, and when you adapt something, I feel like you have an obligation to remain true to the source material, at least in spirit. And while the movies do show the theme of the X-Men protecting a world that hates and fears them, I feel like it isn't given that much emphasis. Besides, the theme doesn't mean that much if you don't care about the characters, and it's pretty hard to care about characters that you know nothing about. Now, I can see you saying that in the movies there are characters who you know about and care about, but it's not the same. One of the biggest themes of the X-Men is about how they're family, and it is without a doubt my favorite part of their stories. In the movies, they talk about the X-Men being family, but we don't really see it. It's not X-Men, a family who's been through so much together who always have each other's backs. It's X-Men, Wolverine, and some people he met last week. 
It's because of this that I consider X-Men Evolution to be a vastly superior adaptation. The show is not perfect, and it definitely changes a lot of things from the source material, but the reason why, in my opinion, it succeeds where the films fail is that the X-Men actually feel like a family. The characters' personalities may be different from the comics, but at least you can say with complete confidence that they have personalities. In conclusion, the X-Men films are a bad adaptation of the source material because the characters are mishandled and underused. A recurring theme I notice is that many of the main characters had their personalities subdued. Characters like Nightcrawler, Rogue, Beast, and Iceman, to name a few, were taken from being outgoing and confident and reduced to being much more shy and quiet. I don't understand that. Were they afraid that such loud, larger-than-life personalities would overshadow Wolverine or something? I don't know, but I honestly don't understand the creative decisions. As a final disclaimer, it is 100% perfectly okay if you like the X-Men movies. I don't want to imply that you're a fake fan or anything like that if you enjoy these films. Like whatever you like. In fact, I'm glad you could find enjoyment and goodness where I couldn't. And I do like these movies for what they are, but my enjoyment of them has greatly decreased as of late. Honestly though, I'm grateful to them. If they hadn't come along and convinced the public that comic book movies could be good, then the MCU wouldn't exist. And if the MCU didn't exist, then I would never have gotten into comics in the first place. So thank you, X-Men movies. You were not a good adaptation, but in a roundabout way, you're the reason I fell in love with the X-Men at all. Holy crap, that was long. Why did I make this? I don't really know. I just really really like talking about the X-Men, and if I do make any more videos, I can pretty much guarantee you that they will also be about the X-Men. I don't really think I have any kind of sustainable schedule of content that I can make to really call this a channel, but if you made it this far, and if you want to stick around, thanks. I appreciate it. Let me know any thoughts you have about this subject. Hopefully, uh, I will make videos at some point, but I'm not promising anything. Uh, this video was not that easy to make, and my setup is also t uh, terrible. Uh, I made this with an iPhone and a $15 microphone and a 10 year old computer with free video editing software and stock images. So yeah, and also you probably saw me looking at my script back there. Can you tell I'm an amateur? <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Thanks again for watching and I'll maybe see you next time. Bye.